Like I said, the people who created the, the machines, they feel like they own all the designs as well. So when we're, we have these conversations, it empowers each other to say, actually, you know what, I'm going to go to that tattoo shop and rip down all of the culturally misappropriated fake shit genocidal artwork that they got hanging in their yeah. their shop yeah. and say you guys can't do this shit no more yeah this is our land yeah if you don't like it y'all can go back to europe or yeah. wherever wherever else that is yeah the transformative marks podcast explores how indigenous tattoo artists cultural tattoo practitioners and ancestral skin markers transform this world for the better dot by dot line by line and stitch by stitch my name is Dion Kazis. I'm a Hungarian, Métis, and Intikatmuk professional tattoo artist and ancestral skin marker. I started the work of reviving my ancestral Intikatmuk skin marking practice over a decade ago. I've helped, supported, and trained practitioners and tattoo artists here on Turtle Island. In this podcast, I sit down with indigenous tattoo artists, cultural tattoo practitioners, and ancestral skin markers from across the globe bringing you behind the scenes of this powerful, transformative, and spiritual work. Yeah, my name is Nahan. I'm Clinket Paiute and Anupiak. And uh, my father um, was uh, Kaigani Haida. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, agreeing to come hang out with me. You know, I think it was time for us to update that old interview we did back in 2015 or so. Yeah, so, definitely. You know, some. Uh, new uh new ways of thinking have developed i think for both of us since we started the work you know Mm -hmm. different changes just different developments as we learn you know uh the perfection comes in the doing i always say Mm -hmm. and i think uh that's one thing i always like to put out there for those who are coming up Mm -hmm. is you know uh, it's not about always thinking about that stuff it's about doing it and when we do it we learn about it Mm -hmm. so um i appreciate you taking the time to sit with me um just tell me the journey that kind of brought you here to be talking to me on the transformative marks podcast what's the journey that brought you into this work and uh anything you want to share about that you mean tattooing in general or yeah well whatever you know however however you choose to interpret that is uh yeah um you know i think uh this path especially was influenced by my grandmother Mm -hmm. and so like i can't talk about our culture without talking about her yeah and also getting emotional about her totally and uh but you know she really kind of took charge uh and said hey this is what you're gonna do yeah she wasn't like oh there's this if you want to do yeah she said no you need to learn your language learn your history learn your culture songs dance yeah all that because i told her i wanted to carve and Mm. i had to go ahead from somebody to apprentice under yeah and um and she said you know what you need to go learn how to put on a potlatch first you need Mm. you need to know your relatives you know you need to know all your history yeah. and your genealogy and then worry about carving later yeah i said okay you know and um so uh you know recognizing that i always had a an ability to create um mm. artwork mm. and it was acknowledged by the people around me and i never took it too seriously i knew it was something i could always do uh, yeah. at a level that was uh, catch the eye of teachers and whoever yeah. else yeah um but actually applying myself to it and developing and uh, further apprenticing and learning from masters Mm. uh, was initiated like you said uh, by the process of tattooing because when i started tattooing uh, people started asking me oh can you do a shark design oh can you do a fish design oh can you do a beaver design yeah i'd never drawn those things Mm. before i never tattooed those things never carved them and so i had to start getting more serious about um our design style Mm. and recognizing um that i needed help and then also reaching out to the right people to do it to show me how yeah and um 
you know, that really was uh, brought on by the process of tattooing. Mm. And through that, ended up um, uh, learning from one of my teachers. His name is Nathan Jackson. And then the other one is Marvin Oliver. Mm -hmm. um, so these are pillars in my life, you know, yeah. that really helped establish a uh, foundation and the walls to, you know, the house that, that I reside in, you yeah. know, and that's really uh, important to mention them. Also, my father, um, Roger Alexander, you mm -hmm. know, really fundamental and, and just perspective, you know, yeah. when people start doubting themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have those fears, doubts, insecurities. Yeah, because, those things come from other places, yeah. uh, not from our, our traditions, it's not from our culture, it's not mm -hmm. from our people. And so he was always able to be like, of course you can do that, yeah. no matter what it is. Yeah. And uh, so all of those things toss it in, you know, yeah. then mm -hmm. ends up bringing me here in a lot of ways, you yeah, know. So all my teachers, uh, my mom, you know, holding me down too, yeah. uh, allowing me to represent their culture to the fullest extent and then, you know, feeling that power herself, mm -hmm. you know, and, and benefiting from that knowledge and that wisdom and yeah. Um, that growth that comes yeah. along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, you know, just as you were talking, um, it, a couple things came up for me, you know, uh, I was able to attend the, uh, the potlatch that you, uh, provided, you know, for your family. And, uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about that, especially cause you did bring up your grandma and all of that. So mm -hmm. yeah, just talk about that. And, how important that was for you and the family and all of that you know i think uh a lot of people don't understand you know even what that is why that's important and uh what that felt for how that felt for you yeah um <clears throat> the primary thing that um for me what we call kuik in our language means uh, like a feast yeah. an invitation to a feast and uh during the memorial mm. kuik, we have a portion where we um, bang staffs on the ground. Mm. And at the end of that, we are done mourning for that person, done grieving. Yeah. And so it was really an amazing thing to learn that about our culture, that we already have ways of addressing grief, trauma, yeah. um, abuse, whatever it is, we got ways to address mm -hmm. those things in our, in our culture already there. Cause yeah. it's not a brand new experience, what yeah. we're, what we're going through now. Yeah. Um, and so that, that last one that we did, that Kui that we threw for my, um, uh, grandmother CA and also my uncle, um, Sitka, uh, he showed me how to hunt, you know, mm -hmm. He took me out to get my first deer yeah. and showed me how to butcher and everything up in Ketchikan. And he was a um, dedicated uh, language student mm. who showed up to the classes that I facilitated. Yeah. And we practiced our culture, Gung Ho. Yeah. And um, so after people pass away in, in our culture, it's uh, one of the most uh, honorable things you can do for them mm. uh, to throw a kuik for them. Yeah. And basically, it's just a time when people acknowledge that, yeah, they were in grief, they were in mm. sadness. And one or two years after that point, it's time to move on and let them who walked into the spirit world go where they need to go. Yeah. We can't keep crying for them. It'll keep them from going on their journey. Yeah. So um, by celebrating their life after demonstrating our grief mm. and giving away uh, wealth uh, and just showing that pride, yeah. Uh, in what uh, what they left us with really yeah. is what it is. Yeah. And honoring uh, our community here today, yeah. which thereby honors their ancestors on on the on the Raven side. Yeah. Um, so really, it's just a big giveaway. Yeah. And uh, a time to come together and work together as a family, as mm -hmm. a unit, stand together, uh, cry together, and then heal together too. Yeah. And then what that does is it. Um, it demonstrates our ability to do that, you know, yeah. and a lot of us, we have this poverty mind state that yeah. we're taught yeah. and born into. We pass that on and we try to keep each other there. But when we do things like that and steadily build up over time, we can give away quite a, an yeah. amount of uh, material objects, you yeah. know, and uh, food and, and that sort of thing. 
and that's how our culture always mm -hmm. has been mm -hmm. and so we have to get to a point where we can all be doing that sort yeah. of thing and encouraging each other each yeah. other to do so so that that kuih was um uh, it was really cool that you got to roll through and and wow. participate and, and tattoo honored. me honored, at that yeah. time yeah. um and that um that role is really important for for us you know mm -hmm. and so for everybody to see who you are mm -hmm. and have you uh, share your perspective and then demonstrate your work mm -hmm. uh, on somebody from our clan who's hosting this mm -hmm. is uh to verify it by everybody who's witnessed they they were paid to witness that yeah and if anybody had anything to say about it they would have said it then mm -hmm. and um so that's the that's the way we um um the word is like where you go uh, notary notary yeah. republic boom yeah. that stamp is on there yeah it's as legit as yeah. you can get yeah, you know yeah. so um yeah that's really what what it was about uh yeah. for for us and it's uh keeping us in in the mind frame of like we can create these things not just for this yeah occasion but these are things that we can also do for ourselves and just for yeah. our community in general yeah so um it's it's about knowledge it's about um revival it's about perpetuation mm. of our culture mm. and demonstration of wealth yeah and it's interesting something just came to mind as you were sharing about that is it's kind of the way that i think about it or the what came to mind when you said it was uh in giving away those monetary possessions actually demonstrates the fact that the relationship with your opposites and those who are witnessing mm -hmm. is actually more important more valuable than mm -hmm. those possessions yeah right um so that's kind of cool you know just uh just sparked in my brain as you shared that that it's like you know a clear demonstration that the things that are most important in our lives is actually the people those relationships those other beings that we share the world with as opposed to those things that we can gather right so it's pretty that's a your your ancestors are pretty dope eh mm. <laughs> you know yeah i'm thankful for my mentors who showed me how to do that and mm. to understand that and to be able to demonstrate it through mm. my actions yeah and those are things that um i know not everybody has the opportunity to yeah. do yeah. and so uh, you know my mentors i'm just always thankful for them yeah. you know and uh taking the time yeah. to show me how to do what they did yeah. uh and um but yeah it's it's about emphasizing relationship mm. it's about building that connection and yeah. even stronger than it was before yeah. showing you who we are yeah and so you get to feel that not yeah. just hear me say that yeah, you know yeah, it's, it's different yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I, you know, I just have to publicly say, you know, even though we're in our own little space here, it will be public at some point is, you know, I was honored to witness and to take part in that, you know, uh, feel still fills my heart with joy, you know, uh, to share that time with your people and your family and uh, to give that gift to you and also to receive the gift of being asked. So I just lift you up and in doing that work for your family and your community and for me and for all of us so just lift you up for that yeah, yeah yeah cool um you know when you think about uh you know the one thing i know since we uh, you know we've talked a lot but maybe not always recorded and you do a lot of work now using more of the ancestral tools and technology in the skin marking that you do um you know i know you started for a brief time with machine and then now you're moving into and specifically very specifically only using uh non-electric tools so do you want to maybe talk about that and what was the for you what was the importance of you know putting that machine away and stepping into just to the hand tools mm -hmm. yeah uh, when i first started tattooing the tools that I had at the time was was a coil coil machine and then after that I moved to a rotary and I I worked with those tools from 2000 2009 all the way until 2000 I think it was 18 mm -hmm. I used machines and I had tried out hand poke 
a handful of times, but that was it. Um, an interesting part of this is I had asked um, some song composers from my father's people to uh, create me a tattooing song. Mm. So I knew that I needed to do that part of uh, the process for the people I was marking. Yeah. And to, to that vibration uh, comes from a specific place and yeah. it lands in a specific place. Yeah. And that can be medicinal for our mm. people. Mm. And not even just our people, but for everybody. Yeah. And so... I knew doing that work, that was part of my job. Nobody ever told me that, but mm. I knew that's what it was, and the song would help me to do that. I prayed about it myself to get my own song, and nothing came. Mm. Shortly after doing my first tattoo uh, with hand poke, yeah. uh, I went up to um, Niska territory and Simsian territory and was getting some work done um, by Nikita, Mm. and you know uh, during that time I'd heard a song mm -hmm. and it was the process uh, uh, it was came at the time when there's four parts of that song for uh, starts mm. to that song and each one is for the directions and so it's to call our relatives ar around us mm. uh, from our ancestral plane Mm. and um to just to say hey be here witness this you know so every yeah. time that we we do it we know what we're doing mm. we know the weight of it and so yeah. it's to honor that weight yeah. and um so since that point i realized well it didn't that song didn't come until i started doing hand poke mm. so and when i started working with hand poke a lot more and focusing just on that um it, it created a different dynamic between me and the people I was working with. Yeah. And they said it hurt a lot less. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it allows space for conversation to happen, you mm. know, because if you got a loud machine, it's just like, mm. wah, it sounds yeah. like a chainsaw. Yeah, mine know? sounds like a chainsaw. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. And I think that um, sounds can be mm. triggers for pain. Mm. Mm sounds can be triggers for healing mm. and um so if we it's about the rhythm mm. it's about the pattern it's about mm. how our senses can allow us to step into different areas mm. that we need for for each other for ourselves yeah. for our community and so what i noticed is that the the hand poke and um the skin stitch and the the uhi the hand tap work ends up allowing that space and you know even just last night when i was doing uhi people were coming up and saying oh that sounds so good yeah it's like it's um it's hypnotizing it's um it's therapeutic they were coming and saying these things about just the way the the, the process yeah. sounded yeah. and they weren't even over here like watching watching you know yeah. they just heard it yeah and so those are good signs to mm. me and mm. i i pay attention to that you know, mm. even though I don't respond to them in that moment, mm. I know that um, the sounds that we create, the vibrations that mm. we create, have the potential for positive effects on our people, even mm. if we don't understand it happening. Mm. And so I think that the hand tools allow for that interaction to happen. The other part of it is I try not to support the, um, you know, they dammed the rivers in Seattle, mm. uh, outside of Seattle and uh, this is the columbia river they got multiple dams going all the way up it this means the fish can't travel and um over there they have a story the next claim people have a story about the original agreements those original agreements talk about how the deer would support the trees would support mm -hmm. the salmon would support the mm -hmm. people would support you know the bears with the mountain the the soil all the yeah. way down to everything has a an agreement that everybody made yeah. at that time and that agreement talked about making sure that each other was safe and mm -hmm. taken care of and would would live in health for mm -hmm. the next generations to come yeah. that's the only way things are going to get better yeah. and um they say that um when they put the dams up mm -hmm. um the people put the dams up that the fish wanted to honor their agreement so much that they were 
swimming up and hitting their heads on this dam. Yeah. So much they would start bleeding, so much they would mm. start killing themselves to fulfill that original agreement to mm. us and to to the rivers and to every yeah. all of creation. Our job uh, and our agreement uh, has been forgotten mm. or disregarded, and so that means uh, we're supposed to take those dams down. Mm. We're supposed to um, fight for our relatives who we made agreements with. Mm. And um, because a long time ago, we all spoke the same language. Yeah. And uh, I think that's consistent through a lot of our our tribes. And um, so it makes complete sense. Yeah. But um, so by not using electricity for something I hold as a treasure Mm. for our people and for our family, Mm. I like to bring people out to the to the forest next to the river, hearing the birds. Yeah. Sometimes they don't, they've never even been to this place before. Yeah. They don't even understand what's happening and the sun is shining and yeah. the leaves are really green and, and there's berries along. There's so much happening. Yeah. That's also part of the process that I love um, bringing people to. Yeah. So um, those are some of the reasons why, you know, no electricity, no problem. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of me nodding to the, to the uh, understanding that we didn't always have this electricity. Yeah. And we can be just fine without it, yeah. practicing our ways of life. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, a connection that was made in my mind as you were uh, sharing it that, you know, just now, the that you talked about the rhythm. And so in my mind, what that sparked was the carving, you know, uh, the drum, you know, because you're a singer as well. Uh, you share song. And so then the hand poke the tap all of those things um you know it gives you a unique perspective and ability to observe those things where maybe others may not have that same training right Mm -hmm. that rhythm training that you Mm -hmm. talk about so you know that just kind of sparked in my mind as you were sharing i was like okay i seen the drum you know, I seen, uh, you know, the ads work and the carving and that stuff. And yeah, so I just wanted to share that as you were talking about that, I could see how, you know, you're uniquely uh, positioned to make some of those observations that maybe some of us can't because we don't have those gifts or haven't trained them, mm-hmm. you know. So I just wanted to point that out and mm-hmm. share that. Um, you know, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast is to talk to people and share, <clears throat> excuse me, as many perspectives as we can and, you know, uh, share, uh, those things that, you know, maybe, you know, we see things differently, but it's important for us to share those things. And it's important for people who share some of the ideas that you share or have a, a same uh, perspective to feel empowered in feeling those ways and being lifted up in their own perspective. So mm-hmm. I really appreciate you uh, sharing the importance of why you do that work. And it also brings forward an, another thing that I never considered in the non-use of that technology of the electricity in terms of the destructive colonial projects, hydroelectric projects that have dammed the rivers, which you are uh, putting forward when you use that electricity. So I appreciate uh, you bringing that forward and highlighting it. Mm. And Chish. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's integrated in, you know, and um, it's uh, something that I think um, it echoes out not to just tattooing, right? Yeah. If I'm going to be um, out in the streets, you know, stopping traffic or doing whatever mm-hmm. kind of thing needs to be done, I also need to consider the other parts of my life and yeah. take a moment just to at least be like, hey, I could do this differently. And that might mm-hmm. maybe maybe five fish made it, you yeah. know, yeah. through that time because yeah. there's less demand for it you yeah. know, for that electricity at that mm-hmm. time. But the other thing is, um, you know, when, when you were talking is that, you know, the machines are, uh, you know, they're made by a specific group of people. Mm-hmm. And so I think that typically, um, 
they claim an ownership or a, a prestige or you know a hierarchy over that machine because mm. maybe their people created it mm. and so when we return back to old school ways of doing things by hand mm. then it allows us the opportunity to feel more ourselves and it's it's a different relationship to time yeah right because we're not looking at our watch every so so often to me oh how long you know like yeah. this it's more about ceremony takes as long as it needs to take yeah if you do it right if you prepare the best you can mm. it's going to have a life of its own yeah everything that's going to need to happen is going to happen there yeah and the people who are supposed to be there show up yeah. the ones um who benefit are going to benefit you yeah. know and the supporters are going to support you yeah. know and, and all of that yeah. lines up so how we relate to time when we use hand tools is a little different you know mm. and I, I i honor that yeah. time that we enter into mm. with the people that i that i step into with yeah. that and um i think it's a it's it's a valuable that's why part of the reason why things like sweat lodge is so so healing because you're not oh at 5 30 p.m yeah the first round is done yeah and then at 5 37 p.m every time we get back in the lodge for the second round yeah it's not like that mm. and you know if we get back in touch with the rhythm of the earth mm. and you know really that's what it is you know returning to the rhythm of the earth honoring mm. that rhythm mm. living that rhythm in every way that we can mm. especially with things that we hold sacred things that we hold special Mm. you know return to yeah. that you know and it, and it feels better mm. we're like oh why does it feel so good when we go out into the forest and come back yeah. you never come back feeling worse yeah big time you come back feeling better every time yeah. same with the ocean yeah tides you know currents all that moon sun yeah yeah again again uh, a thing that comes up for me there is the same thing as when we were talking about the process of giving at the kui and uh building relationships you know of course how are we going to uh connect with and care for and really give a shit about the birds the salmon the bear the deer unless we build relationships with them hmm. and the only way we can do that is by being out there hmm. you know by feeling the sun by feeling that water all of that type of stuff we can't build those relationships in the unless we're there so, yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, obviously a theme in the way that as you presented and shared um, the ways that you have been uh, mentored, mm. those lessons that you have learned, you know, are not just like you said in your words, but also in the actions, the ways that you mm. uh, move out into the world and how you share the gifts that the creator has given you. So, mm. yeah, it's pretty cool to uh, start to connect those dots, I guess, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, those dots are constellated all around us. You know, and there's so much more to learn, Yeah. you know, for everybody. And there's kind of that perspective where it's like, well, oh, they're still learning whatever mm. it is, X, yeah. Y, Z. They're still yeah. learning to tattoo yeah. X, Y, Z. Yeah. And that's to say, in a nice way, they could be getting better mm. or, you know, yeah. they're not all the way there yet. Mm. But really, um, all of us are... We're it's not also, there yet. Yeah, we're not there yet either. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, saying that, I think kind of wants, it, it wants to put a limit on people and yeah. where they're at. Yeah. And the idea, I think we should all be lifetime learners, you know, yeah, figuring time. stuff up along the way yeah. and picking up the good stuff, you know, yeah. letting go of the stuff that we don't, we don't need yeah. and sharing that with each other so we can lift each other up, yeah. remind each other who the fuck we are yeah. because we are trained out of that. Yeah. It's not our fault. None of that shit is our fault. Yeah, right? big so. time. Yeah, that's important to acknowledge that, uh, you know, uh, that fear, shame, guilt, that sense of not being worthy enough, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, feeling like we got to bring other people down to put ourselves up. All mm -hmm. that shit's not us. Mm -hmm. That's not... You look at our teachings, you know, I challenge mm. people, if you if you think that those things are us, you know, go mm. back to your teachings, go back mm. to your stories and figure out, you know, 
that shit wasn't ours. It mm-hmm. was brought here from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, those things aren't uh, aren't ours to uh, hold on to. And like you said, it's important also to acknowledge those feelings, those thoughts, that way of uh, being and acting. You know, if you're caught in that cycle, it's not your fault either, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, I always say, and I've said it before, is, you know, uh, when you know better, you do better. Mm-hmm. So let's start doing better in mm-hmm. those type of ways and and uh, ways of life. Um, and I just want to, you know, just kind of changing gears a little bit. We're mm-hmm. here in uh, Tyandonega, uh, Mohawk territory mm-hmm. for the Tyandonega tattoo gathering in 2023 and i just want to ask you know why do you think these type of gatherings are so important for the work of ancestral skin marking and sharing those marks with the people Mm -hmm. i think um creating recreating access to um the practitioners who hold their work in a specific way Mm -hmm. is really um needed in our communities uh, because there's like i said the people who created the the machines they feel like they own all the designs as well so when we're we have these conversations it empowers each other to say actually you know what i'm gonna go to that tattoo shop and rip down all of the culturally misappropriated fake shit genocidal artwork that they got hanging in their yeah. their shop yeah. and say you guys can't do this shit no more yeah this is our land yeah if you don't like it y'all can go back to europe or yeah. wherever wherever else that is yeah and just knowing that that's not like a some shit that we just laugh at nowadays mm-hmm. it's some shit that we can actually organize to do yeah and to unify and support each other um through as well yeah. um so recognizing the different ways that our tattooing echoes out into things like sovereignty echoes out to things like re-empowerment medicine healing Mm -hmm. uh community uh building i mean there's just so many aspects to it that are beneficial and needed in our communities that um you know each of us has a little piece of something what what we're all doing yeah and we all have those different pieces for a reason yeah and then when we we share that with other people Mm -hmm. it's only going to benefit them yeah we're not going to hold that knowledge Mm. in a way that is like oh i'm i'm better than you so i'm not going to share that with you that's not how you know the reclamation of our tattooing Mm. is going to grow Mm -hmm. right and we want it to grow we want our people to grow yeah and that's what what it's really about and education the type of education that you can get from listening to a fluent speaker mm-hmm. welcome you onto their land mm-hmm. and demonstrate to you what what love means to them yeah what uh, fun means to them yeah what power means to them yeah that'll redefine what those things mean to us as we show up as guests and allow ourselves to be hosted Mm. and be humbled in in the greatness of the nations that we we attend yeah and um you know that sort of uh respect is uh uh, really what allows us to grow and become more human yeah reminds us to be to be human yeah and uh humble you know too in, in in that process and so that's super important to yeah. to go and celebrate with each other too yeah and not just always gather for death yeah a lot of our family only get together for death yeah you know what i mean and that's common everywhere yeah everywhere and so you know when we get together for something positive and uplifting and yeah we make it something very special yeah and that the youngsters then they'll they'll pick up on it they'll yeah. see what we're doing yeah. maybe they'll take the next step and do it better yeah and so they're raised in it now yeah Whereas we didn't have that opportunity to no. be raised in a tattoo gathering environment. No. We couldn't just go over there and be like, oh, these, that's uncle. Yeah. That's just what he does. He's the one who does that for all of his people. Yeah. Yeah, that's uncle. Yeah. Or that's auntie. Yeah. You know, I can just ask them what mm. that design means and if it's okay. Yeah. Or ask them how to do it. You know, yeah. even if they don't tattoo. Yeah. They have an understanding and relationship to the yeah. process. And uh, that creates... um. Uh, an equal 
uh, leverage point because yeah. uh, you know carving yeah has has its point weaving has its point and language and all these different things and tattooing needs to be in that same area yeah and so that's one of the reasons why i think it's important that we gather together yeah like that yeah yeah Yeah, it brings up to mind you know uh when we first uh met you know in 2015 uh in aotearoa and we had that conversation in uh rotorua in the hotel room there um you know you made the analogy that you know our tattooing you know a lot of you i think you said uh you know paraphrasing you know said a lot of our people nowadays you know uh they're not tightly woven together Mm -hmm. and that our tattoos have the ability to tighten us back up you know Mm -hmm. uh mend mend some of those uh wounds and that damage that's been done from Mm -hmm. a variety of reasons and I believe you also emphasize the fact that it's not just the people that's being mended back together, but mm-hmm. it's actually the nations, the communities, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, across uh, the globe that is brought together and mended in terms of uh, the work that we're doing as practitioners and uh, ancestral skin markers. Mm-hmm. And I would say that, you know, it just as you were talking, I kind of got a smile because mm-hmm. you know we've been doing this work for a little bit now mm-hmm. and seeing this gathering and these types of gatherings mm-hmm. uh you know really what would you say uh confirms mm-hmm. that intuition and those thoughts that you had mm-hmm. back at that time when we were chatting you know mm-hmm. uh this place you know uh coming to this gathering really mm-hmm. confirms those things that you were sharing at that time and mm-hmm. i would also say you know, even from my own work, uh, I would say that, you know, when I think about the individuals that I've worked with, uh, both with machine and with the uh, hand tools, you know, it does that, it brings them, it mm-hmm. mends them, it makes them uh, more whole, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought it was cool mm-hmm. to bring forward how those things that we were thinking about back then are just mm-hmm. being, you know, manifested into reality now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that speaking speaking it into into life and then helping it you yeah. know along yeah. the way yeah and that's uh that's always worth showing up for yeah big time you know and uh there's a lot of love yeah at all the gatherings yeah and um thankful to see the people show up the community shows up yeah maybe they never had access before to certain types of tattooing or yeah. certain designs or yeah. things like that and so when we share that with them mm that's also part of the building yeah. nation to nation yeah you got this these folks who are wampanoag and yeah. they got some clinket stuff on them you yeah. know was, and they're like you know kind of reluctant at yeah. first to show it but i was like yo that's awesome mm. i'm not gonna be like oh you can't wear that yeah. you know yeah you're not from the coast whatever yeah. They're they're from the coast but the different the other side yeah. you know the yeah. other side of the coast and they do a lot a lot of stuff for their people yeah and uh was hosted by them just recently yeah and and it was an amazing experience mm. you know so their generosity and their way of thought is really really powerful yeah and um so the other part of that is just sharing mm. the gifts yeah if you realize you got a gift yeah you know, it, for me i love sharing it you yeah. know if this is something that's the best that you feel is the best that you love the most yeah let somebody else enjoy it. See, yeah. see how it affects them. Yeah. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll do the same thing for them yeah, as it did time. for you. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's part of that healing too is trusting that they'll wear those things in that good way. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it's uh, I'm super honored, you know, uh, to call you my friend. Mm-hmm. So I just want to again, you know honor that lift you up and let you know that i love you and care for you Mm -hmm. and you know it's i'm always excited to go traveling and even excited to get those texts when you're in outro without (laughs) me the little beautiful candy cakes that are at that beautiful that that coffee shop yeah yeah little picture oh that hurts deep i'm not there but (laughs) you know um yeah but i always love getting uh those texts you know a little bit of a jab 
what are you doing? Why aren't you here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and I would I would ask, you know, because that was the first time that we met, mm -hmm. you know, in person. You know, we chatted online and all of that type of stuff previously. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first time that we connected in person was in Aotearoa. What mm -hmm. was the experience of going to visit, you know, uh, a community, a nation, and a culture that had been doing the work, you know, mm -hmm. they're way ahead. And I would say that I take a lot of lessons from the work that they are doing mm -hmm. in Aotearoa. And so what was that experience of going there? And what are some of the things and the lessons that you've picked up from visiting? Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, their tattooing is impressive. They're moko. Yeah. And I have, you know, some, some of the best I'm wearing, you know, and yeah. I'm very thankful for, for that yeah and but it wasn't just that that mm -hmm. impressed me it was it was the fact that they also had their language mm -hmm. their verbal spoken language mm -hmm. and they had the different ways of presenting them mm -hmm. you know the chanting the incantations the mm -hmm. the songs the all the different ones you know mm -hmm. and they're able to their vibration to expand that that's their presence you know yeah. that's their message and um i feel like um uh, that was really what what inspired me mm. to see how they were um conducting themselves you yeah. know and and showing up for yeah. their guests you yeah. know and it was a it was a really beautiful experience mm. for sure and um made made some good friends some yeah. good family yeah. you know there comes a point where you just got to be like family yeah and realize you know that's just what it what it is yeah you see somebody enough times and a lot of love and support mm. you know then there comes a you know that yeah. hey, that's family already yeah. so i mean i got their shirt on i got yeah. on my face i got you yeah. know one of the bros marked my face right so um them holding that that fire is is really really awesome you yeah. know and then also them nodding to the Samoans mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. for holding that fire even like without ever letting it go out yeah and just learning more like further into those different spaces yeah and hearing from those people was uh was really important for me you know and I think yeah. uh for the longest time I didn't think there was many people doing the same thing yeah nor was it my concern yeah my concern was doing our people's design work yeah my concern was making sure our people have access to it yeah and bettering myself in the ways that i needed to yeah you know that includes sobriety it yeah. includes um prayer it, in, it includes holding my life in a certain way yeah and i think that uh, you know the the maori uh brothers and sisters they they do a lot of the same same kind of stuff yeah um but yeah that hospitality that's yeah. out there yeah. that aroha is yeah. is real yeah 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 big time. <laughs> yeah i would say you know uh that trip for me i think was very pivotal and very transformational just mm -hmm. going to see the work that they were doing and also like you said that sense of kinship Mm -hmm. that sense of uh family that was created through that experience and you know as we are moving along in the movement i'm finding it important to bring those younger ones who are coming up and mm -hmm. sharing that experience with them but uh you know having th been thinking about that as well i think it's also time for us to start doing some of those gathering mm -hmm. places here you know, uh, in, in our lands and our territories here. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah. And just again, speaking that into existence mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can start to imagine and to dream what those things look like for us here. Mm -hmm. And instead of us always traveling there, us bringing them here, mm -hmm. I think is kind of mm -hmm. the next step in the movement for us here to pick up and be able to share our hospitality, mm -hmm. be able to share our hearts and our minds, our lands and our songs, stories, our languages with them, mm -hmm. um, situated in our places. Um, so yeah, just speaking that out to existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. I heard you say that earlier, uh, I think yesterday or day before. 
and I think you know I'm in, I'm in agreement too mm -hmm. and um, it's 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 needed yeah. and because it'll normalize you know yeah. some of that for us yeah. instead of just doing the same stuff that we're always used to doing yeah it's okay to do something yeah. you know like oh, a tattoo gathering let's yeah. do that might as well have some singers might as well have some food you yeah. know there and you know let it be what it needs to be yeah and um yeah that'd be cool to bring uh bring together our people more yeah you know because even though they're across the ocean there still are people yeah you know what i mean and even if they're across colonial borders they're still our people yeah and so doing those type of events remind each other of that yeah you know and I know we can get short-sighted sometimes with whatever worldview we get projected yeah. and then um, kind of poke fun or judge each other seriously yeah. in serious ways yeah. because of those things. Yeah. But um, there's an opportunity there, you yeah. know, and, uh, and I, I'm in full support. And, yeah. and I've been thinking about that for the coast as well, yeah. you know, and uh, how that would look, yeah. what it would be like. And um, there was some plans I kicked around with one of my friends to do a dance festival mm. um, next year. Yeah. And, uh, cause Seattle doesn't have something like that where yeah. it's like full fledged and yeah. bringing other people in and stuff yeah. like that. And, um, so she asked me about it again a couple of times. And so she's an organizer too. Yeah. She wants to make it happen. So I think we might just do that next year anyways. Dope. And then, you know, alongside that and be like, tattooing and dance festival yeah you know and and just have some food and make it, it doesn't have to be super big super fancy no but it has to feel right yeah. it has to feel good yeah it has to have the right people involved totally you know and uh i think it's it's one of the needs of our communities for sure yeah big time yeah yeah um <clears throat> you know uh in this conversation as we've been uh rolling through is there anything that's come up that you feel you want to share or question or thoughts that come forward uh, i mean as far as you know what we're doing is you know it's it's getting to a, a point where you know our the second wave of of folks is coming out yeah you know and they're doing awesome work yeah and it's really cool to see and i'm super inspired by them yeah to see what they're doing and yeah. how they're doing it too yeah and i you know i'm glad that our our tattooing is making its way back into yeah. our cultures yeah with the same normalcy as we would talk about mm, the painting the yeah. paints we would use or yeah the clothing we would wear this yeah. common knowledge like yeah. oh it'd be hides oh yeah there'd be this oh it'd be yeah. that yeah and then are there people still around to do that yeah this i know a couple of people you know yeah I and mean, i want them to say the same thing about us yeah you know and to be like oh yeah yeah i know a couple of people you yeah. know and if you don't like what they do you can go to this other person you know yeah. and they yeah. have this different thing going on so you can go go yeah. to them there's options now yeah and i'm excited to see where it's going to maintain its its evolution yeah we need to and that our people will reflect the mm. evolution mm. that is signified by by the markings that we create yeah um because we can't devolve anymore no we can't and uh no matter what this colonial society says mm. we can't devolve we can't become smaller than we are yeah. we can only get bigger we can only get more powerful <coughs> And, you know, uh, I think the tattooing has the opportunity to demonstrate that. Yeah. And it has that, has that spirit in there. And yeah. I think it's starting to make its way out. Yeah. And, um, and I, I'm excited to, to help it. Yeah. To help the spirit of tattooing mm -hmm. evolve, mm -hmm. help the spirit of tattooing stay in an honorable way, to mm -hmm. stay in a thoughtful way, to stay in a, um, you know, an uh, organized way and an, an activated way mm, mm. in a spiritual way. Yeah. And because that portion of our practice has always been there. Yeah. It's not brand new. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not optional. Yeah. You know, it's always been something. That's how we always were. Yeah. We understood that. And yeah. we, everything we did was like that. Yeah. And so when we can return to that yeah. and remind each other of that work yeah. that's alongside it, then we're going to start seeing some real shit happen. Yeah. yeah. Some real positive changes for our people. Yeah. Yeah, see it in the kids and the smiles. Yeah, see it in the elders and their laughter. Yeah, you big know, time. Hear it in the songs we compose. Mm -hmm. That'll be what they sing in the future generations. Yeah, yeah. As uh, Julia Mungiao Gray, our friend and colleague from Papua New Guinea, uh, phrases it: "The new old." You mm. know, we are the new old. So, yeah, that's kind of what you're talking about and bringing forward and highlighting and. You know, I also want to acknowledge those young ones who are coming up as well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the integrity and the power that they do this work with, mm -hmm. you know, you can see and you can, uh, you know, you can sense that little bit of nervousness as they come up to mm -hmm. chat with you and, you know, as they're starting their pieces, but once they get into that work, you know, uh, with their mentors there, uh, mm -hmm. You can see the strength that they do that work with, the mm -hmm. confidence that they're doing that work with. And, you know, it's powerful. It's so mm -hmm. powerful to mm -hmm. see these, uh, you know, as you say, the second wave coming in and just mm -hmm. standing in it. And it was cool to uh, speaking with Echo, you know, she was saying that, you know, and I didn't realize this, you know, because that's always been my dream is that this work isn't special because it's a revival it's special because like you said it's just, that's just one of the things that we do it's just part of our culture mm -hmm. uh and it and so her sharing about her little ones coming up going to tattoo gatherings going ha being part of tattoo ceremony and that's just what they know mm -hmm. right I, that was always my dream to think like one day our kids will just grow up and this is just part of everyday life. Mm -hmm. And to realize that that generation is already here, mm -hmm. it just blows my mind and, you know, mm -hmm. makes my, uh, I always say, makes my heart happy, mm -hmm. you know, not just the smile, but mm -hmm. the inside, that mm -hmm. joy of seeing those little ones who are rising up in this and mm -hmm. it's just part of who we are. Mm -hmm. That's just so, uh, yeah, I just it blows my mind actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the way that we can actually embrace each other through our, our, our designs and our, mm -hmm. and our work that embrace, you know, is something you take everywhere you go yeah. from that point. Yeah. You know, somebody from that culture took the time yeah. and they invested in you yeah. and you invested in them. Yeah. And then so let that be beautiful. Let yeah. it be done in a in a powerful way. Let it be done in an honorable way, respectful way, healing yeah. way. Yeah. You know, just kind of allowing that to take life. Yeah. You know, you know, making sure that it's done right. Yeah. Um, I think it's inclusivity that, that we yeah. need. Yeah. That allows us to grow. Yeah. You know, if we we can't can't hide anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't yeah. we can't be like, oh, I only tell that knowledge to a specific, mm. you know, uh, even though some of my teachers who are clan leaders, they'll say, you know, all the carvers need their secrets. Mm. All the weavers need their secrets, mm. you know, and, uh, and I understand that. But yeah. one of my other teachers has always been inclusive. Yeah. He'll go tell, he'll get on national television and tell a traditional story. Yeah. You know, and, um, that's one of the reasons why I tattoo everybody. Yeah. And I don't I don't put put uh the teachings of my elders mm. um aside. Yeah. You know, they took the time to to share that with me. Yeah, you know, time. that's also part of the tools. Yeah. That's part of the toolkit. Yeah. And if I didn't have that, you know, yeah. I might do something different, but yeah. those are my teachers, you know, yeah. and so I choose to honor those teachings. Yeah, you know, I could have plugged my ears instead, but yeah. You know, <laughs> instead, we had pancakes. You know, yeah, what I mean? definitely <laughs> blueberries. And yeah, shit, yeah, you know. But yeah, it's it's dope to witness. Yeah, just to be a part of it. Yeah. You know, and and uh, to be chosen to to do that. Yeah, do that work, play yeah. my part. Yeah, you know, and to witness it. You mm -hmm. know, that's part of the joy too. Is mm -hmm. uh, part of the work. I think is witnessing it and uh lifting those people up letting them know like good job mm -hmm. you know like lifting them up sharing mm -hmm. and i would also say you know in other times 
in that gentle, caring way, you know, provide a bit of guidance. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, that piece you did was really good, but, you know, there's some things that maybe we need to work on with you mm -hmm. in terms of bloodborne pathogens, cross-contamination, mm -hmm. or, oh, hey, maybe you should try this needle instead of that needle that you were using. It might help you out. You mm -hmm. know, those little, those little gems that we've gathered mm -hmm. on our journeys is like, Yes, I acknowledge the beautiful work that you're doing, but here are some more tools for your toolkit, not mm -hmm. in a judgmental way, mm -hmm. not in a shaming way, because mm -hmm. that's that colonial bullshit, yeah. but in a way of encouragement. Mm -hmm. You know, take it, take those little gems as little gifts, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, little scoldings. Yeah. It's not a scolding, yeah. it's a gift that says, hey, we're going to help support you and bring you along. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's uh, really, uh, I've enjoyed this conversation, mm -hmm. you know, it's been pretty cool to sit down with you and, uh, you know, talk about these beautiful things and to reflect, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's been less of like an interview, but more of a reflection of the mm -hmm. journey that we've taken, you know, individually mm -hmm. together and as communities, uh, just because so much of you know, this journey has been with other people. And I would say, you know, those young ones who you're out there uh, doing the work, you know, find opportunities to connect with other practitioners. You know, mm -hmm. you could be in a shop, you know, you could be, you know, the only indigenous person in your area, in your community, in your culture. You know, there's a, a large group of us out here now doing the work. So take that invest you know invest that time invest that money to find your way to one of these gatherings and you know come up in that respectful humble way mm -hmm. and help out you know mm -hmm. uh don't expect that uh you're uh you know don't have that expectation that you deserve everything but come up sharing you know mm -hmm. come up giving come and ask hey do you need anything to be done you know that's what i was sharing uh with heather is that you know people you know uh expect us to always give but mm -hmm. sometimes we have to pick and choose those people that we share with as mm -hmm. mentors mm -hmm. uh and some of that knowledge uh yes we should give it you know give it away and share it but mm -hmm. sometimes we have to be very picky about mm -hmm. how that happens you know and so come out build relationships mm -hmm. and uh you know you will get those gifts and those gems even if it's just by listening, even if it's just mm -hmm. by watching, you know, it may not be that somebody picks you up and takes you under their wing, but mm -hmm. you're still going to get those little gems from the conversations that mm -hmm. you hear. You're going to get those little uh, insights by watching, mm -hmm. observing, learning. You know, those are the, some of the ways, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I'd go trapping with my uncle, you know, and he wouldn't really say, you know, this is that and that and this is the thing that we do. I just watch. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he'd go, okay, you go you know make the bobcat uh trap right mm -hmm. you go make the little hut and i'm like okay <laughs> you know so those are all our ways as well is just to come and show up and uh take that time spend that time build those relationships mm -hmm. yeah definitely and uh traveling to these different spaces you know yeah. and not just uh because i went to borneo and they had a really strong tribal traditional tattoo yeah. practice there yeah and they have it um you know in hawaii yeah and samoa and they have it in you know tonga and they have it in tahiti and they yeah. have it in you know uh alaska is getting there too yeah you know in um taiwan yeah you know and there's a lot to you know even like the philippines mm -hmm. you know the amazon you know the yeah uh, Africa, you know, I mean, just taking the time, yeah, that's a big part of, I think, prerequisite for yeah. understanding the weight of what it is, you yeah. know, and integrating that knowledge base into yeah. what it is that we're doing, you know, yeah. and just that uh, travel is that huge educational opportunity, yeah, and equipping yourself as a, as a body marker or as yeah. a tattoo artist to be prepared to go and travel to these other folks yeah and to share what what you know yeah and uh to learn what they offer yeah and to listen you know when spoken to and all that it's just part of it you know yeah. it's a big part of it 
and then uh yeah it, it ends up benefiting everybody involved yeah big time instead of just saying oh i'm gonna go to the shop and i'm gonna stay in this shop you know and then yeah. that's it yeah um saying hey go to this different part of the world just be there for a little bit yeah maybe you don't even go to a tattoo shop maybe you never even talk to a person who does tattoos mm. you just go sit with an elder yeah you know and be open to that yeah that conversation to people who you might not normally talk to yeah because even in the city you know we got folks who sleep outside yeah and they'll come up and you show them kindness yeah there's some jewels there too yeah big time there's jewels there yeah and i i swear multiple times i've heard my ancestors speak through mm. these folks sleeping outside mm. and so you know i do my best to take that time listen and offer yeah. up what i can yeah big time you know no matter where i'm at yeah because we can learn from everybody big time yeah, yeah. from kids from folks sleeping outside yeah from folks of privilege folks yeah. without privilege yeah you know from the trees from yeah. the waters from you know returning to that knowledge base that's where yeah. it all comes from anyway yeah big time stars and you know yeah. the sun so i mean talking about that returning yeah it's uh not so much a revival but like a realization yeah yeah, yeah it's a realization that we have to do those things and it's only going to benefit us yeah yeah, yeah. waking up to yeah. that reality you know coming mm -hmm. out of that slumber that drunkenness of the colonial project you know <laughs> yeah um i just want to briefly touch before we uh move on and wrap up you know uh in the beginning of the conversation you had talked about walking into those shops that are mm -hmm. stealing our shit yeah. you know um and uh i don't know if i've expressed it in another you know episode of the podcast but when i originally I, imagine doing a podcast the original name was the who's stealing your shit podcast <laughs> you know <Nice>. um <laughs> i decided to take a little bit more of a positive turn oh, but yeah, i think yeah. it's important to uh talk about uh these issues and concerns because when i mm -hmm. listen to other tattoo podcasts mm -hmm. you know uh western american tattooers mm -hmm. you know really dismiss this idea of cultural appropriation mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. idea of you know the misappropriation and i would say the theft and the damage and the hurt that is caused mm -hmm. by the taking and uh use of our designs patterns symbols and motifs which are very much connected not only to our culture but to our actual individual identities you know our family histories the stories of our communities and how we came to be mm -hmm. and a lot of that is really missed when people just look at it as a beautiful design mm -hmm. you know um a lot of that stuff is uh you know pushed over and uh the way that i speak about it is it's really another step in the colonial project of genocide where it's actually the erasure and the theft and the invisibility of our people you know uh always being seen but never being heard mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. uh people say oh yeah yeah pff, cultural appropriation but that just means you got your fucking ears closed mm -hmm. You know, so uh, take notice and realize that that shit's harmful. Mm -hmm. That shit hurts our people. Yeah. You know, like yeah. uh, you might take a beautiful crest or a clan symbol or design, you know, from the Northwest Coast and you put that on there. But that's actually the story of someone who did something amazing. Mm -hmm. And then that comes to life every time that tattoo and that name is given. Mm -hmm so yeah i just wanted to highlight that and bring that forward and just ask for some reflection on it yeah definitely um you know these colonizers want all of our beauty but none of our struggle yeah you know that struggle is what they caused yeah they don't want they don't want to look at that because that would make them feel uh either guilt or like they need to do something about it yeah. they don't want to be accountable to what their ancestors did mm but they always benefit from what their ancestors did yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And they're playing us to try to pretend like it's not a, not a big issue. Yeah. And, and it actually is. Yeah. Um, but that's also, you know, um, these colonizers are just, 
that's their culture is yeah. theft. Yeah. Their culture is genocide. Their culture is destruction. Their culture is those things. Yeah. And um, it's hard. It's a hard pill for them to swallow. Yeah. That it echoes out in all these different ways, even mm. in the creative arena yeah. yeah where they're doing tattoos yeah and um that um uh, idea that they don't have to listen to the people whose culture that they're stealing from mm. is an echo of what their ancestors have done yeah you know the complete disregard and dehumanization yeah. of of all of our efforts of all of our stories yeah. all of our land you know um and because they don't have that they want to do they they can identify with it yeah. on a certain aspect they can appreciate it visually mm. and they can say oh native americans were mm. a strong and past tense type of yeah. people whatever yeah. whatever but by doing so it is that erasure it yeah. is that um that um, disregard it yeah. is that sweeping their history underneath the carpet so they don't have to actually be accountable to it yeah um you know and i've organized uh i wrote a wrote a piece yeah. and it's about reclaiming our uh our stance on tattooing mm. and i got 30 or 40 of us indigenous yeah. tattoo artists to sign that document yeah. and to agree with what we say in that yeah. and and to have that available for use yeah. towards people that we see stealing our shit yeah and to say it's not just me saying yeah. this it's yeah. not just one person's opinion because that's one of the other things that they say oh you're just you know an, an angry indian you yeah. know so that means to them they don't have to listen to the angry indian yeah but if enough of us express mm -hmm. a common uh message yeah in a way that we we command you know what what's happening yeah then they have a better chance of receiving that message yeah you know when we're unified yeah there's nothing more powerful than a fucking unification of indigenous people yeah who are organized yeah who know what what the fuck needs to get done and how the fuck to do it yeah and motivated to do it yeah and lifting each other up in that way yeah some amazing shit can happen Definitely. and we haven't even seen no nah. haven't even seen a fucking a tenth a thousandth of what that actually is yeah and i think because we're organizing and tattooing in these other areas we're gonna have these conversations yeah. where like bro it's not just this yeah bro well, how can we support you guys over there yeah bro it's really happening in your community i know it's not what they show on the news yeah i know it's not what these colonizers are saying about your people yeah so what's really happening yeah and how can we fucking change that yeah so yeah definitely genocidal artwork yeah um is what these colonizers do anytime yeah. that they try to imitate our designs yeah and i've always said that in front of experts on my culture who are yeah. of colonial descent yeah and uh they don't like that yeah. but also it's something they have to be reminded of yeah because it's not their place yeah. it's not their not their shit yeah and um it's almost like if i were to take the fucking crown jewels of yeah. uh you know whatever the britain yeah the great great stolen britain crown yeah. jewels yeah and just half-assed it like yeah scratched up the gems and brought yeah. that around and was like oh this is chopped this it is up good. yeah <laughs> and it's only like fragments and like bits and fairly you know barely even resembles what the mm. fuck it actually was mm. you know and uh but you know i think we're also saying that we're seeing a shift in the consciousness of these colonizers right now yeah and it might not be happening everywhere happening everywhere yeah but it's happening yeah and when we have these real ass conversations with them yeah and we can spice it just enough yeah so we we get our fucking message across yeah and we show up and show them yeah then they're able to understand a bit of that now yeah and what you sometimes have to do is say yeah you guys are fucking up yeah this is why and this is how you can change it yeah this will bring respect to yeah. 
what you're actually trying to do. Yeah. This will bring education to what you're trying to do. Yeah. This will bring kindness and consideration. Yeah. These are things that are fucking rare in yeah. our in our environment now. Yeah. They fucking made it that way. Yeah. They fucking made the poverty. Yeah. If they wanted to change it, they could. They yeah. choose not to. Yeah, big time. So all of that shit is established in a way to benefit them. Yeah. And they don't want to hear that shit either. But once we point that out and say, hey, this one small portion, you could change this a little bit. Yeah. And it fucking actually help us out. Yeah. Make it clear. Lay it out. Yeah. I've recently seen some positive shit happen. Yeah. And been um, helped out by these folks I call my friends now. Yeah. These colonizers who were fucking strangers before. And yeah. I could, you know, we could see each other and not even yeah. bat an eye about each other. Yeah. But now we're in a p- place where we're like, hey, I know, I know you're about to adopt your, your relative's child yeah. now. How yeah. is that? How are you feeling about that? Are you, yeah. are you ready? Yeah. You know, like, oh, yeah, you know, fucking. So we have like some real ass conversations about yeah. that too. Yeah. And so I'm, uh, I'm happy that's happening. Yeah. It needs to happen more. Yeah. And when we talk about things like reclaiming what's ours, yeah, the kindness is ours. Definitely. It's always been ours. Yeah. The love is ours. The generosity is yeah. ours. We're reclaiming that too. And our land will return yeah. back to us. Yeah. Not just the fucking gatherings or, yeah. you know, us coming yeah. together for whatever. It's, we're going to have the authority to say, this building is here. Yeah. We're fucking taking it back. Yeah. And we're going to use it for whatever the fuck we want. Yeah, big time. And we're not going to pay you guys shit for it because you guys are here on stolen land. Yeah. Nobody asked you to fucking come over here. Yeah. What the fuck are you guys still doing over here? Pretending like it's your place. Yeah, yeah. This ain't your fucking home. Yeah. You know, shit like that. And then seeing seeing the colonizers, like, you know, nod their head, you know, like, <laughs> and try to connect those dots for them too yeah. sometimes yeah and knowing when it's right like mm. discernment knowing like how you're saying knowing that discernment yeah if i say this to this person it's going to benefit them yeah it's work for me yeah but if that little bit of work is yeah. going to help out all of us yeah i could tell them that for for right now yeah i could i could school them up i could game game them up on this shit yeah so that they understand yeah that i took the time Mm-hmm. That I showed them our people's kindness. Yeah. I showed them our people's generosity. Yeah. I showed them our people's love. Yeah. I'm not going to fucking do that with everybody. Yeah. But with the ones I know that were potentially down to help us back. Yeah. I will, you yeah. know. And Big I, time. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to see happen. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Make sure we're all still red on the cameras. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and when I, uh, you know, thinking about all those things, I think, uh, it's also a powerful lesson that I've even learned myself uh, in, for a time working in form line, uh, you know, stuff that I'm not connected to ancestrally, uh, realizing the power of that and also realizing the power and the beauty of our own symbols, you mm-hmm. know, uh, for a time I was doing that form line work with help and encouragement from my coastal brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. But I realized that it was actually pushing out and taking up too much space in my own practice. Mm. So I didn't have the time and the ability to learn my own visual language, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, And I think that part of that was also understanding the programming that I was given by the colonizer about my own ancestral Mm. visual language. Mm. You know, uh, a lot of the powerful, beautiful uh, design symbols and motifs from your community Mm -hmm. and our friends and colleagues uh, along the northwest coast, the Haida and the Tsimchan and the Heltzik and the Nishka, all of those designs are put up. And, you know, for me, coming from a community that doesn't have the same style you know, it's like, ah, oh, you feel like those are less than, you know, mm, you, you know, mm. that programming of like that savage, right, mm, mm. is in there. And so it was really a process of coming to a point where I'm like realizing the beauty and the magnificence and the brilliance and the power and intelligence of my ancestors mm-hmm. and our own visual language. And the only way Got that it. I could actually do that was by, you know, not practicing those other Uh, things that Mm -hmm. you know i only had a peripheral relationship to Mm -hmm. you know through uh friends and colleagues uh but it was when i 
you know, looked at our visual language, I seen the power of my community. Mm -hmm. I seen the intelligence, all of those beautiful parts of my community. And that's a part of pushing away those colonial narratives that Mm -hmm. say that we're savage, Mm -hmm. say that we're uncivilized, that it's simple and all of those type of Mm -hmm. things, right? So for me, it's just, uh, you know, in saying all those things is to give encouragement to other people who... Mm -hmm are from other communities who may have those Mm. same thoughts, feelings, and emotions Mm. to put down those patterns, designs, and motifs that are not from your community Mm -hmm. and give the space to explore the Mm -hmm. brilliance and resilience of your ancestors as demonstrated, woven, written, uh, beaded, you know, sewn into your clothing, into uh, the baskets from your community, Mm -hmm. go to those places and learn the visual language of your community, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and take a step back and realize that, you know, you're only contributing to your community by using your communal uh, visual ancestral language. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I think it's time for us as non-coastal folks to step away from uh, those designs that don't mm. belong to us. Mm. Um, so just, a, 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 I guess, a nugget of wisdom that I've learned from mm. my own experience mm. and to share with for those little ones and those young ones who are coming up mm-hmm. to keep in mind that, you know, yes, uh, Woodland's art is beautiful. Yes, Northwest Coast form line is beautiful, mm-hmm. but that's not yours. And so we need to give room and space to grow within our own communities mm-hmm. and our own visual mm-hmm. languages. Um, I just wanted to share that just because it comes up and mm-hmm. show the encouragement and the growth and uh, the reality that, you know, if we don't know better, you know, we can't do better. But mm-hmm. now that we know better, we're doing better. And mm-hmm. so, you know, maybe you got some of that work. Maybe you did some of that work. Mm-hmm. Um, but now it's time to put that away unless you're connected to it and mm-hmm. start to build on, build up your community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, as, as somebody who does our designs full-time uh, and makes a living from it, and I think that it is nothing more beautiful than somebody who represents their culture, mm-hmm. represents their designs. Mm. represents their uh genealogy and their their lands you know and brings that message around yeah. that's that's powerful you yeah. know what i mean and that's what makes the world what it is yeah. you know what i mean that's what um makes the universe as diverse and intricate and yeah. and uh, valuable yeah. as it is yeah. that's what we need yeah. you know we can't have a forest just full of cedar trees yeah you know there's so many different species out there that reflect the land and the land reflects the trees and the yeah. sky and all all of that is so connected and yeah. based on the, the space where where we're at or where we're where we're from yeah and i i think it's you know uh i have been one of the voices to kind of try and command that space and say yeah. you know are you from that people yeah. you know what tribe are you from? Yeah. Why are you doing our shit? Yeah. You know, and, and uh, somebody has to, yeah. you know, at some point. Uh, but also, I understand that people are brought in for reasons. You yeah. know, they're shown specific things for a reason. Mm. And the the ones who invested that knowledge and that, uh, um, you know, that understanding mm. have wisdom enough yeah. to share that with specific people who they trust yeah uh and and that they love and appreciate yeah you know and that's that's no matter what culture we go go mm. and visit yeah somebody shares their treasure with you yeah yeah that's a huge gift yeah hell yeah that's yeah. an epic gift you know yeah. what i mean and so um it, it it's it's a way to honor that relationship you yeah. know too when yeah. when somebody says Hey, I, I want you to do this design. Can mm. you do this for me? Yeah. Or hey, let me show you how to do that. Yeah. Because I know that's your interest, and yeah. I can tell you what that's about. Yeah. And you know, let me show you. Yeah. And then it just happens. You know, yeah. what I mean, that's that's love. Yeah. That's love. You know, so uh, even you know, there's there's coastal folks who are from different tribes. Yeah. You know, in uh, the Salish Sea area. And, um, 
one of my students right now he's he's maca yeah and he's also um uh, several other of the coast salish tribes and um you know some of the concepts that i show him they come from our people mm. you know and uh, as far as carving goes and i i kind of joke around and say watch now he's he's starting to be a prominent carver mm. like right away yeah and watch their whole people's design change yeah because somebody was like hey bro you're my fucking bro yeah you know big time if this is something you're into yeah. like this is just how we do it yeah take it or leave it yeah big time you could you could take it and run yeah you know we're all trying to get better yeah and so um you know in ways of understanding and ways of teaching like that knowledge that wisdom mm. we are it's the same thing as our designs yeah you know yeah. we share that mm -hmm. we share that knowledge we share that wisdom Mm. because it, it has a physical effect on our body yeah it has a mental benefit yeah it has a, a spiritual and uh an emotional engagement yeah that often is left to the side but it actually benefits us yeah in that way yeah. and um it's like sharing a your your favorite elder with somebody yeah. you bring yeah. them to their house and say hey this is my favorite elder yeah they make this this fucking coffee yeah <laughs> they make this they make this fucking cookie yeah you're gonna think different you're gonna yeah. feel different after you sit with this person yeah that's nourished. what our knowledge is yeah. yeah you'll feel nourished and the designs do the same thing yeah. okay. it's a reflection of of that that yeah. background work um but i see like um you know a lot of coast salish folks doing form line stuff yeah and um i think that's cool but yeah. also all of, i tell them you know like hey you guys have a really rich and beautiful yeah. design style too that's coast salish yeah and you guys should really focus on that shit yeah and let us do our shit yeah i ain't never done your shit once yeah. you know what i mean and that's waiting for you yeah that door is there yeah whether you choose to walk through it yeah is your choice yeah that's something you can do for all your people though yeah you know for me the door is fuck our door has already been open i yeah. fucking halfway got thrown through that door to yeah <laughs> to do yeah. it you know what i mean yeah and so um there's nothing more beautiful than people representing their own shit yeah you know and being lifted up by other folks around them yeah sharing that yeah. i mean that's how we got our fucking oct octopus bags yeah they claim oh it's a clinker thing they got that shit all the way on the east coast way out yeah. here yeah and they call it an octopus bag too yeah you know what i mean so there there was a point in time sure design space yeah. the the beating yeah everything the technology we all shared that shit yeah we all shared that yeah and uh not one is better than the other no no whatever no. works for that time that's yeah. best is yeah. best yeah you know and if somebody got that you know what i mean that's that's what it needs to be yeah and that's that's all good and also get the struggle you know what i mean i get i get the you want to do some shit that sells you yeah. know so that's yeah. kind of one of the things yeah that we're all faced with is this bullshit capitalist society survival we gotta, we gotta say yeah, yeah we gotta pay these bills yeah but who told us to do that shit yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and we're out here feeling like that's our primary fucking obligation this mm. lifetime you know and so if you're gonna do some shit that'll sell better Mm. then a lot of people will be like yeah i'm about to do that shit yeah at least i'm not stealing some shit from somebody at least i'm not doing this shit with drugs at least yeah. I, at least you know what i mean yeah. and i understand that i understand the struggle of the fucking poverty i know yeah. what poverty is you yeah. know but also i understand the obligation to keep shit real yeah and to to get better and to improve yourself you know and yeah recognize the wealth yeah it's there already yeah big time we could sleep on it or not yeah one of my teachers is uh he he always would say e tu yeyati the cut that e tu yeyati uh uh his name was uh david katzik mm. and uh he said uh everything is already within you mm. everything not even yeah. just some of the things yeah not even just parts and like the biological aspects yeah you know mineral uh liquid yeah gas yeah not just those yeah. but everything mm. the whole universe is inside you mm. what you mean you can't do that shit yeah you know, yeah. Yeah. You know how great you just look at me and be like do you know 
how big your potential is mm. and be like you don't wow. even know yeah you have no you think you know mm. you have no idea i'm telling you he'd just be shaking his head and laughing and, <laughs> and so that type of that type of shit is really real our people need that yeah our people need that and he would tell everybody that yeah didn't matter where they're from yeah you know so um that's that's part of it too yeah you know exactly. factoring in all of that yeah. understanding and into how we uh reflect our patterns our designs yeah you know so and sharing that is is a huge thing yeah yeah and i would say um you know the way that i express it is the rights relationship and responsibility to those designs so mm -hmm. you know part of that uh relationship and the responsibility is given to you as an ancestor a descendant of that ancestor mm -hmm. um another part of that is gifted to you like you were expressing mm -hmm. somebody's investing in you from their culture as a mm -hmm. gift you know and and giving you those uh responsibilities you know mm -hmm. that relationship to those patterns the designs mm -hmm. motifs and symbols comes through that relationship you have with that individual who gifted you that knowledge mm -hmm um so yeah acknowledging and that the, that phrase acknowledges all of those things um and yeah just putting forward to ensure that when you're doing that work to ensure that you acknowledge where those uh where the right to do those mm -hmm. things comes yeah. from mm -hmm. from the the relationships that you have to that knowledge mm -hmm. to those design symbols motifs tools technology mm -hmm. um and also acknowledging that those two things also give you responsibilities mm -hmm. uh you yeah. know we a lot of times we forget Yes, we talk so much about rights, you know, mm -hmm. this is my right to do this, my right for this. And it's like, well, with every right comes a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's not be blind to that and to mm -hmm. remember it and to ponder it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're doing it, think to yourself, okay, I'm doing this thing. Well, what's my responsibility now that I'm doing it? Mm -hmm. Is it the fact that I have to, you know, give something back? Mm -hmm. right you know what are those things that you need to acknowledge and to share um as you do that work mm -hmm. yeah. yeah totally i think about that when it comes to doing uhi work mm -hmm. you know uh, the tapping work and it's not something i asked for mm -hmm. but it was something that was given to me and um so yeah responsibility and for a for a long while i didn't i didn't use them yeah because i was kind of like yeah you know that's kind of a big thing yeah and um so i was given tools by several different different folks from the islands out there to do yeah. that and um i think that's a huge honor yeah. and like you're saying a huge responsibility too yeah and um i think it's uh it does have that responsibility you know where you're you hold it in a certain way yeah you know and you bring those relatives out uh, as a guest yeah you know and i've had um some of my my brothers watch me as i work and some of my sisters do watch as i work and yeah. give me some pointers along the way yeah they keep an eye on me man let me know if i'm doing this shit wrong or what yeah. if i'm fucking up you know it's, let me know you yeah know. big time um and all thumbs up all encouragement from everybody yeah. that i sat with and I do hold it in that way and a great reverence yeah you know and i feel like it's important to hold other people's treasures in that way yeah also our treasures you yeah. know also the treasures that we give yeah. to other people big time you know and uh that reverence is is something where the energy will change yeah whatever it is that you're doing yeah big time. this shit will change yeah. and um whether it's hunting Mm. or fishing or mm. you know no matter what it is walking yeah. Yeah. if you walk with reverence yeah. you know for all of creation you yeah. wake up and you're like yo that rain is amazing yeah it allows me to live mm -hmm. you know yeah. instead of being like oh you know boo you yeah. know yeah, yeah, yeah. it's raining again yeah, yeah. it's terrible <laughs> weather outside yeah yeah we've been we've been taught away from a mm -hmm. lot of the powerful aspects of being who we are yeah you know so um that's a responsibility too yeah big time you know by being born who we are that's mm -hmm. a big responsibility and so uh 
just walking in that way so where yeah. where we can we can do that Definitely. we can do that again and when you when uh you have one of the other phrases is uh everything has a spirit mm. and that goes right along with with this what what we're talking about yeah and so if you treat that kindness uh that spirit of uh you know your language with kindness and with encouragement then mm. the spirit of your language will be approach you in the same way yeah it's a res- reciprocal relationship yeah big time. no matter what it is yeah and so if you do something right if you hold yourself in that way yeah that's just going to happen naturally because yeah. you're you're putting that out there already yeah and people can recognize that yeah and they want to honor that too they want yeah. to feed that fire yeah, you know what i mean time. and uh I think that's um, the special part of being human. Yeah, big time. Special part about yeah. being uh, not even just indigenous, but just like of the land. Yeah, big time. Of the ocean, you know yeah. what I mean? Of the stars. Yeah. We all got these different teachings that tell us about that, remind yeah. us. Yeah. And then so what are our responsibilities coming from this place? Yeah. What do we protect? What do we defend? Yeah. What do we organize? Yeah. What do we love yeah and we we put love with everything we do yeah we put kindness in everything we do mm. you know and uh we just use that that uh, i think that's a really good gauge yeah. for what how we live yeah and when when it seems like you know we're going up against an enemy mm. but if that enemy is continually putting your people down continually killing your people yeah then you're showing kindness mm. to your people mm. for defending yeah. them and fighting those yeah. those ones that are oppressing you. Yeah. So that that way that we look at um, mm. uh, that perspective is is really important to to uphold too. Yeah. It's not rage. It's not vengeance. It's just defense. Yeah. It's defense. If yeah. somebody continually does something that's not. Yeah healthier for for your people then you know we got to figure something out we yeah, gotta gotta change that yeah doing that warrior shit yeah. you know what i mean and um i think that's needed yeah big time. there's a lot of matriarchs now self-proclaimed yeah. a lot of you know chiefs and yeah uh uh kind of who she said this one thing she's like uh too many chiefs and matriarchs not enough warriors yeah you know, and and what does that look like? How yeah. how do we function in that way? Yeah. And how do we how do we support these other components that are yeah. also involved in our cultures? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're allowed we're allowed to do our shit now. Yeah. We're allowed to practice. They made laws now where mm-hmm. we can be Indian again. Yeah. After they done fucked us up so much. Yeah. But as long as we don't get too fired up yeah as long as we don't organize militarily yeah as long as we don't pack our weapons with us mm. like we were, our ancestors always did yeah you know and that's it's a trip to tell each other like oh why would you carry a that yeah. weapon or a knife or a gun or yeah why would you know how to be a black belt or self-defense or choke yeah. people out yeah you're not so that's not peaceful like mm. Well, neither is these people mobbing up on us and doing this shit to us every single day. Yeah. I'm just knowing these things. Yeah. You know, that's all. Yeah, big time. So, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, as we... I just, uh, you know, thank you for the conversation. I think it's brought a lot of powerful, beautiful things forward. Uh, some challenging thoughts, some challenging ideas, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for myself and probably for those who are listening, mm-hmm. you know, uh, no matter where they're coming from. Uh, so I appreciate you sharing your heart and for uh, doing the work that you do. You know, I mm-hmm. hold you up in that work that you do in your Achoos. family, in your mm-hmm. community. And I would even say within yourself, you mm-hmm. know, uh, mm-hmm. each of us are doing that uh, powerful work that maybe is invisible to other people. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as we move through our lives and change and transform, you know, I can speak for myself. You know, I'm not the person I used to be, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. I'm not... 
uh, you know, I don't act in the same ways that I used to act mm -hmm. because of the, uh, the journey that I have taken mm -hmm. and the, you know, we talk about this healing stuff and sometimes we don't allow each other to heal because we keep bringing up the shit that they did in the past, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like how are we supposed to heal if you keep bringing up that one time I was drunk and mm -hmm. did some crazy shit, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's not allowing me to heal. That's ripping that bandaid off again mm -hmm. and again mm -hmm. and again, yeah. you know, uh, we have to allow allow each other to heal and to move forward and so i just thank you for the work that you've done in your own life mm -hmm. and then you know as that ripples out into your family your community mm -hmm. um you know into that larger circle of influence that is our community our larger community indigenous community mm -hmm. and then the community of all that is including you know those that swim in the water you know fly in the air mm -hmm. those that take root and those that walk on the four legs you know yeah, yeah. Uh, those trees all of those things uh so thank you for that work that you do mm -hmm. i just lift you up in that and you know uh as always give you uh love and care and compassion mm -hmm. for those things that you need to do and the wit the journey and the trail that you need to walk upon mm -hmm. yeah. teach. a lot of love for you bro thank you and i appreciate you and all the efforts that you're putting forward yeah you know helping amplify the voices of our people yeah. organizing yeah. and putting forward a lot of effort and sacrifice mm. and uh that energy doesn't go unacknowledged mm. you know yeah and uh even if some of us don't say it yeah you know we all appreciate it yeah and we all lift you up too thank you everybody you know yeah. everybody that i that i talk to is like yeah. yo dion yeah, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> i know that's my fucking bro man yeah, yeah he's the fucking best yeah you know so cool that's what that's what i that's what i say to everybody yeah and so yeah lifting you up thank you yeah. Yeah. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and taking this journey with me uh, through this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll just ask that you would go and subscribe uh, if you haven't already done so. And if you have subscribed, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, following this journey. I just want you to remember that uh, no matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done, or what you've been through, that uh, you are amazing, that you are loved, and that we need you here today and uh, going into the future so that we can transform this world for the better uh, through our collective thoughts, actions, feelings, and our compassion for each other as human beings. Head on over to next week's episode where I talk to Tristan Jenny, a Cree artist based in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, in this episode, we talk about the importance of self-care and the balancing of family in a hustling and bustling tattoo career. And the last thing that I will ask you is to do me a solid and share this episode with somebody that you think will enjoy it. Thanks a lot and see you next week.